A little while ago, I saw this Reddit post titled PSA, Be Considerate to Mirrors. Now, this is focusing on Arch Linux, but it applies to other distros as well. So the main point that's being made here is that because these servers that actually host your distro's repos are funded by members of the community, and in many cases, these members aren't actually being paid themselves, someone actually has to pay for these bandwidth costs. So you shouldn't go and arbitrarily waste bandwidth just because it's going to make your life a bit more convenient. So there are some interesting points being made in this post. So I thought I'd go and actually expand upon them and also correct a few mistakes the author actually made. Now, there are many ways you can go and waste server resources in this situation, but the two main examples being used in this post are running pacman capital S YYU instead of running it with a single Y, and also having a cron timer that goes and downloads packages in the background, which you aren't necessarily going to be installing now. Now, I don't think this second one is always a bad idea. I think there are situations where you can make it work and you can actually be considerate to how much bandwidth you're actually using. But I'll explain a bit more about that in just a bit. Let's go over what Pacman capital S YYU actually does. So Pacman capital S, you've used this plenty of times if you just want to go and download a package. Nothing out of the ordinary here. This is the sync option that then lets you go and use some further options to go and modify what you're actually syncing. So the dash u argument, that's going to go and update out-of-date packages using the package database that you currently have downloaded on your system. So if your package database is out of date, then you're going to be downloading out-of-date packages but they will still be newer packages than what you currently have. Now the dash y option, this is actually going to update your package database if it's not up to date. And that is the important part here. It will only update the package database if there are updates that need to be made. Now the reason why YY is wasteful is because unlike Y, it will actually go and ignore the up to date condition. So it's going to go and refresh the database even if there are no updates to actually be made, which is just downloading data from the server for literally no reason. Now, that's not to say that YY never has a use. If it had no use, it wouldn't be a thing you should do in Pac-Man. The reason why you might want to run it is very rare, but if you have a corrupted package database, that is pretty much the only time you'll ever want to run YY. So let's say you were refreshing your package database by doing SYU and you have a power outage during the time you're trying to refresh it. That could cause a problem there. Maybe it won't, but if it does, running YY should go and fix that. Now, one thing to note is never, ever, ever run Pacman-SY by itself without the U argument. The reason why is because this can lead to you partially updating your system. So what can happen here is you'll have a application you've downloaded with a refreshed version of the database, but then you have some packages that are still reliant on the old version of the database, and this basically leads to a partially upgraded system. Now, this isn't always going to be super bad and just break your system, but it isn't supported by Pac-Man and should be avoided at all costs. Now, the same point about SY and SYYU also applies to AUI helpers like Yay as well, because when you're just using Pac-Man arguments in Yay, it's just going to pass them directly through to Pac-Man, doing a little bit of extra stuff as well, but it will still pass those options directly to Pac-Man. So it's going to be basically having the exact same effect. Now, as for other AUI helpers, I don't know what they do in the back end. Yay is the only one I really know about. Now, as for these cron downloads, I'm not going to tell you that you shouldn't use them because if I did, I would be a little bit of a hypocrite because on my system, I do actually use them. Now, I make sure that I don't use them that often, and this is kind of the point I'm trying to get at here. If you limit how much you're actually using them, then it does make sense, especially if you're someone who likes to update very frequently. So let's think about this for a second. Do you need to run this command? every five minutes? Is there any reason to check if there are new updates every 10 minutes? Maybe every half an hour? Probably not. Maybe once an hour? Probably not, but maybe a little bit more likely. Now, what about if you did it at, say, once every 12 hours like I do on my system? If you update once a day, well, that's not really that big of a deal. I say 12 hours and not 24 hours because I turn my system off at night anyway. So anything past 12 hours effectively equals 24 in my case anyway. Or what about if it's once every three days? If you like your system to be relatively up to date, I don't really think there's any reason why that's a bad thing to be doing. But you have to keep in mind, if you are running it, say, every five minutes, you are just completely wasting resources because you're not going to be updating every five minutes anyway. 
Now you might be thinking, if I'm going to install the updates anyway, why does it matter if I download them early? Why, why does it matter if I download updates once every six hours or every four hours if I'm going to install them anyway? Well, let's say that you download an update through this method. And then before you actually go and update, another five updates for that program actually come through. And this actually can happen if, if they're very minor patches. So you've gone and downloaded five of these different patches when in reality, you could just go and download the latest one and that would come with all of the stuff you'd already downloaded without having to go and query the server each time. So it's not going to be a massive bandwidth hog, but nothing that I've talked about in this video on an individual level is actually going to be a problem. The problem that happens is when you have a big group of people doing them. So if every single Arch Linux user had their downloads going on every five minutes and then was running Pac-Man dash capital S YYU every single time, that would massively, massively increase bandwidth costs for no benefit whatsoever. Now, the author did make one little mistake when they're talking about doing this cron job update. So, basically, I'm running the command pacman dash capital S Y U W dash dash no confirm. So, the W basically means that you're going to be downloading the updates, but you're not going to be installing them. So, they'll just sit there until you actually go and run pacman dash S Y U without the W argument. Now, the dash dash no confirm basically is going to just say yes to any of the prompts. So, if there's anything like, say, do you want to replace this package with this package? It'll just automatically say yes. And when it actually prompts you to actually do the download, it'll say yes and things like that. Pretty much you just run this command if you want to use Pac-Man inside of a script. What they said is keep in mind as well that you risk ending up doing an unsupported partial update as well if you try to install a package before updating your entire system using Pac-Man-SYUW. Now, I don't know where people keep getting this idea. I've never seen it mentioned anywhere in the Pac-Man documentation. It's not mentioned anywhere on the Arch Linux wiki, not for just the general Arch Linux wiki stuff or for the Pac-Man page or installing updates. I don't know where people keep finding this idea. I've heard people say this on Reddit a bunch of times, I, but I haven't seen it exist anywhere outside of Reddit. So if someone knows where this idea keeps coming from, be sure to let me know because this doesn't allow you to do partial updates. But let's just assume you don't want to download the packages in the background. You just want to check for updates. So in that case, you can go and use a script called check updates. And basically, it's going to do exactly what it sounds like. It'll check for some updates. And then if there are updates, it'll say, hey, do you want to download the updates? And you can go from there. Personally, I like having my packages downloaded in the background. And then every single day, I just go and update my system. And then I don't update again until the following day. So that's pretty much everything for the post itself. But Someone actually made a good suggestion in the comments. I know what you're saying, good suggestions on Reddit, can't happen. No, someone actually did. So if you happen to have multiple devices that run Arch Linux on your network, so let's say that you're someone who has a Arch Linux desktop and an Arch Linux laptop, what you can actually go and do is set up a shared network Pac-Man cache. So when you actually go and download packages, what it's going to do is put them into this network cache. And then when the other system goes and downloads them, it'll actually download from your local cache before it actually goes to the server. So obviously this won't work for everything, especially if you have different programs installed on both systems. But when there are similar dependencies, it will actually pull from the cache first, meaning that less data will have to be pulled from the server. Also, because you're pulling from a local cache, it's going to be faster than having to download from a server. No matter how quick your internet connection is, downloading something locally is always going to be better. Now, a nice thing about this cache is it doesn't actually have to be two base Arch Linux systems. As long as they both use Pac-Man and they both pull from the Arch Linux repos, it should still work. Now, this does mean that distros like, say, Manjaro, which have their own specific repos, won't actually work. But for anything else, you'll be fine. Now, obviously, bandwidth is getting cheaper every single day, but you do have to keep in mind that someone still does have to pay for it. Even though in some places you actually can get quote unquote unlimited bandwidth, in a lot of cases, there is some fine print in there that says this is unlimited up until this point, and then we massively throttle it. So even though it may technically be unlimited, a throttled connection isn't really the same thing. Now, that's not to say you can't get actual limited connections before someone gets on my case in the comment section. I know you can, but in a lot of cases, they're not actually.
actually unlimited. That's the point I'm saying here. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Kobinian, Andre, Nathan, Montezar, Will, Chico Bento, Joseph Mitchell, Peter D, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you want to go and support my work, there are links down below to my Patreon, Subscribestar, LibrePay, and all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.